we will cover specifically the alternating current generator which forms part of the electromagnetic induction section of the physics syllabus. So firstly we need to know that generators induce EMF by rotating a coil in a magnetic field. So we have a magnet as we see here, north pole and south pole, magnetic field between the two poles and over here we have our rotating coil in the magnetic field. Secondly, we need to know, and often you'll be asked this, in fact, I think in most tests and exams that I've ever written and that any of the other tutors have ever written, we have been asked what energy conversion takes place in a generator. And you need to know, unlike a motor, which converts electrical energy to mechanical energy, a generator, both alternating current and direct current, convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Okay, so let's take a look at the way that a generator works. So we have a magnet over here and we have magnetic field lines, as we've said, and we have a coil which is being rotated in a clockwise direction. We know that when our normal to our coil is parallel to our magnetic field lines or our angle is zero degrees, we have a magnetic flux that is at a maximum. As you can see over here, we have a maximum magnetic flux. We can see we've got a maximum number of field lines moving through our coil. So we use something that we call a right hand generator rule in order to work out the direction of movement and the direction of our current. So we point our index finger in the direction of our field lines between our magnets. Our thumb is our force on our coil. So in this case, if we look over here, we would point for the left hand side over here, we would point our index finger right, our thumb up, and we'd see that our middle finger points away from us, indicating that at this point, the current is flowing away from us. In the same way, if we were to do it for this side of the coil, we would point our, middle, our index finger right, we'd point our thumb down, and we'd see that our middle finger points towards us. That, therefore, that indicates at this point in your coil, you will have a movement of current towards you. As we see, our angle between our normal to our curve, which would be our normal would be somewhere here. Our angle between our normal and our field lines is now getting larger. It's increased from zero degrees to closer to 90 degrees, which will happen over here. And therefore, our magnetic flux is decreasing. At this point over here, our normal is at exactly 90 degrees to our magnetic field lines. And therefore, as we know, our magnetic flux will be a minimum. And over here, we would have rotated a full 360 degrees to get back to point one. And our magnetic flux will now be in the opposite direction. However, um, sorry, I need to correct what I said there. Over here, we have now rotated. So here we've rotated. We have then rotated 90 degrees. Over here, we've now rotated 180 degrees. Therefore, our current flowing in our in our coil is now in the opposite direction. Let's take a look at what we mean by that. So if we have our coil over here, let's label the top part A. We know that at this point, our current, as we said earlier, is flowing towards us. Point A then moves over here. And as we see over here, point A now moves to the bottom. As this, was, as this coil were to move around, to complete another 180 degrees as this point which is now b because we've said the bottom is point a point b moves around the current will now flow towards us however at point b over here we know current was flowing away from us so therefore we now know that the direction of current after 180 degrees of rotation now switches so point A and point B switch. At point A, it now flows away from us. And at point B, it now flows towards us. Therefore, the direction of current within the coil has now switched. And we see this on the graph. At point 1, our flux is a maximum. At point 2, our flux is getting smaller. At point 3, we have a minimum, which is 0, because we know that our Normal is at 90 degrees to our magnetic field lines and therefore our magnetic flux is zero because cos of 90 is zero. And at point four, we've now rotated 180 degrees. We get a maximum flux. However, it is below the x-axis indicating that it is now in the 
other direction from where it was in the first place. Now we see by the dotted line, if we were to do another 180 degree rotation, the following would happen and we'd get back to point one where our current is flowing in the same direction as where we began. Now, by Faraday's law, an EMF is induced as our magnetic flux changes as we rotate the coil through the magnetic field. Our EMF, which is the movement of the current in the coil, is proportional to the slope of the flux first time graph. So as we've looked at the flux graph above, so we've said that we have a maximum at point one, a minimum at point C, and another maximum at point D, however, in the opposite direction, this would be our flux graph. Now the gradient of our flux graph will give us our EMF graph. As we can see, our gradient is zero at point A, so point A is zero. Point B, we are getting small, our gradient is getting larger, so our B is then a larger value. At C, our gradient is largest before we then decrease again. So as C is a turning point of our graph, we can see that our current is moving. So our current increases to point C and then decreases to point D. So point D we've said is another maximum, however, in the opposite direction. So we now know that our current from point D now falls below the X axis, indicating that it now flows in the opposite direction. And this is evidence of alternating current. And for this reason, we call these, this the alternating current generator because we have an alternating direction of the flow of current in our coil due to the movement of our coil. And as we indicated above on these diagrams, our flow of current changes direction at 180 degrees. It's also important to note that our maximum EMF occurs when our flux is zero. As you can see at point C, our flux is zero. However, at point C, our EMF is at a maximum. So we must know, and you'll often be asked, when is your EMF maximum? It's when your magnetic flux through your coil is at zero, because that is when you will get your maximum change in your magnetic flux. So if we have a quick look over here, this is an easier explanation as to the movement of the current. If we look at point one, we have, so we're gonna label it the black part of the coil and the white part of the coil. So our black part, we're rotating anti-clockwise. So over here, let's look anti-clockwise. So our, so our index finger will point left from north to south. Our force on the left-hand side of the coil, our thumb will be down because we are rotating anti-clockwise and therefore our middle finger points away from us. So we have a clockwise movement of current. However, if we look over here, we now have a, a north to south, our index finger is left. We have a force on the black part of the coil going down and our current is therefore away from us in the black part of the coil. So as you can see, we had a movement like this in the coil where it was moving towards us in the black part of the coil. However, now in the black part of the coil, it is moving away from us. Therefore, we have had a movement, in, a change in the movement of current through the coil. As we can see over here, we have a maximum when our flux is zero, which occurs at B. So over here, we'd have a maximum. At C, we have a minimum. At D, we have another maximum, but in the opposite direction. And at E, which is not indicated on the diagram, but we would have another minimum because our magnetic flux will be a maximum. So it's very good to know that when your flux is a maximum, your EMF is a minimum. And when your flux is a minimum or zero, your EMF induced or your current is a maximum. We also need to know that in an alternating generator, your slip ring commutator is used. So this would be a slip ring commutator over here. So your black part of your coil is always connected to the black part of the slip ring commutator and your white part is always connected to your white part. So as we see over here, we have a movement away in the black part. So our black part of our commutator would be moving, our current would be moving out of it and into the white part. Whereas in the top picture over here, it is moving out of our white part and into the black part, as we can see. 
So there we can again, it illustrates the change in direction of the movement of current through the coil in an alternating generator. So alternating EMF causes your alternating current, as we've said, and your coil is connected to your circuit via brushes and a slip ring commutator. Often they will ask you what the difference is between your alternating current generator and your direct current generator. And you need to know that an alternating current generator uses a slip ring commutator. So you have alternating current, whereas your direct current generator would operate in exactly the same way that we see over here. However, this commutator will be changed to a split ring commutator in which the it will be explained in the direct current generator video but in short your your direction of current will not change because your coil will be connected to a different part of the commutator every 180 degrees and therefore the current may change in the coil however when it's taken to the external circuit it always flows in the same direction but have a look out for our direct current generator video and we will explain how the split ring commutator works and how it operates differently to our alternating current generator.